Hello everyone, I am Vikram P. Madhuri here and in this session uh, we, we would be focusing on the usage of BAPI, the scenarios of using a BAPI. BAPI can be used in uh, below three scenarios wherein we can call a BAPI from ECC system, from BAPI from other ECC system and we can call a BAPI from non-ECP systems as well. So before understanding this concept, let us move on and first get into the basics of BAPI which I already uh, uh, covered in another another video but here I'm going to explain you in detail uh, about the basics of BAPI. So the BAPI basically yeah so for any SAP trainings you can contact us at info at Yeah. So what exactly is the functionality of a BAPI? So BAPI are standard business interfaces that allows external applications access to an SAP systems uh, processes, functionality and data. A BAPI then is a gateway to the SAP system and processes accessibility from external systems. So uh, uh, to, to make, make it understand uh, in, a, in, a, in a pictorial format, I'll give you a clear representation of what exactly is a BAPI. By, 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 ex, by, ex, by understanding that particular picture, you can easily understand what exactly is a BAPI. So this is the this is the thing I'm talking about. So the business application programming interfaces. In this, we have an application server where exactly the BAPI is there, and we have the R3 system. It can connect with any of the SAP SAP or non SAP systems. So on the right side you can see there are non SAP systems here, and on the left side you can see uh, SAP system. So we would be looking at scenarios wherein we can use the BAPI within the R3 system or the ECC system, or we can use that from another R3 system or ECC system, external R3 or ECC system or from non-SAP systems as well. These are the three different scenarios in which we can make use of a BAPI to, to exchange the data. So here the blue one which you are able to see is the business object repository which actually uh, serves as the base for getting the data to connect with the non-SAP to SAP systems. And the BAPI is, becomes a part of business object repository. This BAPI we are going to create in SE37 transaction as an RFC enable function module. After creating the BAPI, we are going to connect it with the business object repository. We are going to keep it in the business object repository so that that can be used to interface between the systems. So let's go back to what makes, it, uh, what makes a BAPI so special. So the SAP business objects are an essential part of the new business framework, which is SAP CRM to transform R3 into a con com con component uh, based architecture. BAPIs are SAP's latest technology for data exchange between SAP and other systems. So SAP uses BAPIs extensively by SAP in its own development process and SAP recommends using a BAPIs as a primary means for interfacing between R3 systems as well or the ECC systems as well. So the BAPIs are compliant with the uh, CORBA and uh, COM slash uh, D DCOM and uh, distributed uh, object processing. So I'm going to explain you about the CORBA and COM and DCOM in another another session. So here we have using BAPIs, you can develop applications without detailed knowledge of underlying R3 system. So we don't have to bother about what exactly is in the in the beyond the beyond the uh, BAPIs. So we just uh, focus on you know BAPIs to be worked worked on. So BAPIs provide standardized platform independent interfaces for external applications to access the SAP system. This allows integration between R3 and uh, third party softwares as well as we discussed, legacy systems and custom developed software as well. The SAP business objects and their BAPIs provide an object oriented view of R3 business functionality. So this is, uh, this is what we actually already discussed. So what exactly is a BAPI now? So after discussing all these uh, uh, concepts, we basically most of us will get a basic doubt that what exactly is a BAPI. Now, some people say it's a it's an RFC enable function module, and some say it's a it's a business object, it's a method in business object. So what is correct? In fact, both are right. So a BAPI is an RFC enable function module, and it is also a method in business object repository. Basically, what we do is. We create a function module in SE37 or the function builder. You can do it from SE80 as well. So from the function builder, when we create a function module, we make it as RFC enable function module. Then this function module, we are going to connect it with the 
business object in SW01 transaction wherein we we connect this RFC enable function module or where we attach this RFC enable function module in the business object as a method. And so when we create a business object and get into it, we'll have different options there. I'm going to show that options now. In that there is there will be an option called method. In that method, we need to add this RFC enable function module there. Then it becomes a complete business object repository uh, enabled BAPI, which can be used as an interface. So what makes a BAPI special? RFC enable parameters must be uh, data dictionary types and call synchronously and no exceptions. So characteristics of BAPI is like BAPIs are simply ABAP function models as we are, as I was uh, telling you with the following special characters. It's a remote enabled. It should be a remote enabled mod function module. Whenever you are creating a function model in, uh, in for BAPI, you need to make sure it's a remote remote enabled function model. A BAPI is generally called synchronously. So uh, use of uh, ALE to attempt uh, asynchronously BAPIs, which we'll mention later. Okay, so we'll discuss that later uh, uh, about the synchronous and asynchronous process. All BAPIs parameters must be defined in reference with reference to, not by pass by value, pass by pass by pass by value. We have to go with pass by reference. So pass by reference so must be defined in pass by reference to an uh, ABAP uh, dictionary type. You cannot use ABAP types such as I integer or character here. So BAPI cannot have any exceptions defined. You uh, you you report errors using an export parameters named return by convention. Okay. So there is something called BAPI return which we can make use of to uh, to have the exceptions here. So then we have business objects. This is how a business object is actually. This is a business object. We can see a list of all the business objects in the BAPI transaction. I'm going to show that in the SIFT server. So uh, when we when we get into the SW01 transaction, uh, when we get into the creation of a business object, we will be seeing these uh, options: interfaces, key fields, attributes, methods, and events. Now we will discuss in detail about attributes, methods, and events in this slides. So let me show you that uh, uh, when we get into the SW01 transaction. So this is the SW01 transaction. I'll log in into it again. So this is the SW01 transaction. When I display, you'll have interfaces, key, key fields, attributes, methods, and events. So we are going to discuss in detail about attributes, methods, and events in this particular uh, uh, slides. So this is what we have here. Yeah. So here, attributes, methods, and events. So methods actions that can be taken on or by an uh, own an object a method consists of abap code and can take many forms including a transaction so we can add a transaction in a method we can add a function module in a method or we can add a custom code in the method by using the program name i'm going to show that when i'm creating the pro uh, bappy so it is implemented as a subroutine in the uh, objects implementation program like function modules methods can have import parameters export parameters and exceptions but methods that are also BAPIs do not use exceptions. That's a very important point we have to be always remembering. So events describe a change in the status of an object. Events can trigger various processing operations in the system to handle this status change. And interfaces, a combination of attributes, methods, and events. So it's a, it's, it's a combination of all these put together, which are common to serve object types. We can define an interface once then use it for several objects of uh, several types of objects. So an object type may be may have uh, multiple interfaces. Interfaces are object types in, in themselves. So uh, when we do this on the system, it will be pretty clear. OK, this particular slide may be a bit uh, complex to understand at this point of time, but you can uh, very well understand it when you get back to it. OK, so a program, normally any program, any static program can be uh, made use of uh, for, a, for a BAPI. So that is the actual implementations of the key and attributes methods of the object type. When the system activates an uh, object type, it automatically uh, creates the ob implementation uh, program. So these are the all the object types actually. So when we create, when we when we talk about an invoice, invoice is a document, right? So that our document is an object type. Uh, and when we have a requisition, requisition is a document. It can be considered as an object type. We can say we can have a bill uh, or uh, a receipt, anything. Uh, these are all object types actually. So we have a couple of examples like delivery note is an object type, material is an object type, material uh, data, material data is an object type. So non-SAP applications, archived documents, EDI messages, all these are object types. Now a business object repository looks like this, uh, uh, something like this. 
uh, I, I'll open it in the server and show it to you. It will be the basically there in the BAPI transaction. So when we get into the BAPI transaction, it's something looks like this. So you have all the various, uh, you can explore all the business objects here and uh, you can select whatever business object that you want to make use of uh, for, for your particular program. So here we have the business object and the method here. So the business object name here is bus1006. So it will have uh, uh, methods in it. So the BAPIs are added as a method in it. So this is the business object display and this is how we have just now seen and the standard BAPIs. So we'll discuss about a couple of standard BAPIs that we regularly use that those are get list, get detail, create from data. So those things will just uh, understand that. So most SAP supplied business objects come with standard recognized BAPIs. Three of the most important of these are get list, returns the contents of the key fields for the object, a get detail, returns detailed information about the object, create from data, creates a new object in the R3 system. Okay, so now coming to the scenarios, we have, uh, uh, we'll first discuss about uh, a scenario wherein uh, we are calling a BAPI within the ECC system. Okay, so calling a BAPI within the ECC system to call a BAPI from within the ECC system, simply call the underlying function module as you would any, you would do with any other function module. The convention of uh, uh, the, the standard uh, convention that we have for naming the function module is BAPI underscore the object type and method name. This is how we call it. So in the in when we when we whenever we name a BAPI, we should be naming it in this way. So let's say we have, uh, of course, uh, if at all if it is a, a customized BAPI, it should start with Z BAPI or Y BAPI. So Z BAPI underscore sales order underscore get status. So this is how it should be uh, named. So in in the in the above example, the object type is sales order. Let's say if the object type is sales order and the method name is get status. So the function module name is BAPI underscore sales order underscore get status. Note, note that uh, you must check the return export parameters for errors since BAPIs do not use exception. So return also, we'll see how it, it actually works in this particular program. Now this is how we actually we work. We, we, we use this uh, particular uh, concept. Here we have BAPI underscore sales order underscore get status is SAP standard BAPI which we are uh, making use of in our program to call uh, a particular BAPI within the R3 system, within the same server. So for this we have parameters order like BAPI VBLN underscore VBLN. So this is a this is a parameter that we are using. Data return like BAPI return. So this is something which is mandatory for every BAPI program to be used. So return and return return values have to be written into some one another BAPI. So status info like standard table of BAPI stat initial size. So now here status info is something which is a standard table of BAPI BAPI SD. SDS TAT and where did we take this uh, structure or table from if we took it from this function model if you get into this function module you can see that there is a structure called BAPI SD S TAT that is from where that is where from we are taking it uh, from there so if written hyphen type is equals to s then you know write errors written messages so this is how we actually exceptionally are handling the written messages so here we have status info the status info like standard table of BAPI status so we have tables, so status info is here and importing values return is equals to return. So this is a simple program which we can which we can uh, execute in AC38, uh, AC38 and we can get this uh, 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 output for that. So calling a BAPI from a different R3 system. So to call a BAPI from a different system, call the underlying function model within the, with the destination modifier to indicate the system name. So the only exception that we have or only the addition that we have to call it from another R3 system is that we have to mention a destination for that. So let's say, let's let's look at this example here. So whenever we are calling a BAPI from a normal program uh, R3 system within the ECC or the R3 system, then we are not making use of this destination, uh, uh, destination uh, tag. So here we have call function, the BAPI name and destination HP2. So this is the destination have to be added here. 
so we have parameters data and then we have the call function destination and then we have the exporting sales document is equals to order the importing return is equals to return table status info status info so everything is same the only addition